Time displacement can be found under the time category, and this is a very interesting effect. It's similar to a displacement map in the sense that it's displacing pixels, but instead of displacing them on the X and Y coordinates, it's displacing them over time. So let me show you how this works. I'm just gonna bring out my logo here, make it 3D, and then add some keyframes on the Y rotation. I'll set one there, go forward about a second, and cycle that around one full revolution so that now my logo just spins around the Y axis. And why don't we slow that down a little bit? I'm working at 24 frames per second. So let's make this last about three seconds. And now it just rotates around nice and slow. Next, I'm gonna make a new solid layer by going up to layer, new solid, and I'll call this displacement map. And to this solid, I'm going to add a ramp effect, just a gradient ramp going from black to white. Now the displacement map effect would take these black and white values and shift corresponding pixels on the X or Y axis. But like I said, instead of displacing pixels across X and Y coordinates, time displacement is going to displace them across time. And I'm going to apply this time displacement to an adjustment layer. So I'll go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and I'll call this time displacement, apply the effect to it, and the first thing I need to do is choose my time displacement layer, which would be the displacement map. So I'm gonna choose that, make sure to choose effects and masks for the source so that it takes that ramp into account. And now I've got this slit scan effect happening on my logo as it rotates. So let me play this back and you can see that now I've got this very kind of twisty, corkscrewy looking displacement happening to my logo. So what this effect is specifically doing is taking these black and white values and shifting these corresponding pixels underneath the adjustment layer in time forward or backward. So if we go back to the start of the comp, you can see that the bottom half of my layer is already beginning to rotate. That's where the brighter pixels are. So everything between 50% gray and white is going to be displaced forward in time. And everything from 50% gray to black is going to be displaced backwards in time. So the top of my layer doesn't start rotating until about a second into the comp. And that's controlled by this max displacement time property. It's set to one second by default, meaning that white pixels are being displaced one second forward in time, black pixels are being displaced one second back in time, and everything in between is proportionally spaced out. Now the reason it's proportional is because I'm using a black and white gradient that's just going top to bottom linearly. But if I were to say add a posterize effect right after that gradient ramp, now I have very few shades of gray between black and white. In fact, I can drop this down to four, so I have black, dark gray, light gray, and white. And if I turn this off, now it's very clear what's happening. The bottom section of my logo is being displaced forward one second in time, which let me just move my keyframes forward about a second. So at the start of the comp, nothing is happening. But right away, that bottom section starts to rotate, followed by the lighter gray, the darker gray, and finally the black. So this is a very simplified version of what is actually happening with our full unposterized gradient. So again, if I turn that posterization off, we're going to get much more resolution in our time displacement. If I zoom in, you can see it is still pretty segmented and we can clean this up a little bit with the next property, which is time resolution measured in frames per second. Now this really depends on the source that you're applying it to. I'm using a still image that I've added keyframes to, so the motion is being produced right here in After Effects. So I could increase this number. If I zoom in again so we can see these segments, let's say I change it from 60 to 120. Then those lines are basically gonna get double the resolution. And I can continue doing this up to a certain point, but then as I'm doubling this every time, you'll see that it really isn't changing. Those bars, or the height of this resolution isn't really increasing anymore. Even if I go up to say 1080, the height of my comp is 1080, so you'd think that putting a value of 1080 in here would give me one pixel resolution for the time displacement. But that's not the case because not only is it dependent on the source that you're applying it to, but also the bit depth of the comp that you're working in. While this gradient does look nice and smooth going from pure black to pure white, if I zoom in far enough, you can actually see the segments between the shades of gray. In an 8-bit comp, which is what I'm working in, an 8 bits per channel project, there are only 255 levels of brightness between white and black, and I'll prove it to you. If I go into a color picker, a brightness value of zero gives us pure black, and if I raise that picker all the way to the top, we get a value of 255. So actually, if you count the zero, it's 256 
levels of gray. But what that means is that I can't possibly have more than 256 levels of time displacement within my comp. And that's very noticeable because my comp is 1080 pixels tall. So if I really wanted to see a one pixel resolution worth of time displacement, what I would have to do is go into my gradient ramp and set the endpoint to be 255 pixels away from the start of the ramp. So I'm just gonna change my 1080 value to 255 and I'll turn that layer on so we can see what's happening. Now my gradient exists up here. So actually what I'll do is I'll bring this point down to closer to the center of my comp and we'll say just round it off to 400. And then for the end of the ramp, I'll say 400 plus 255. So now I know that I have the full range of brightness values between black and white offset one pixel at a time between those two points. So let's take a look at the time displacement now. Well, we're really only getting that twisted distortion right in the middle now, and the top and bottom portions of my logo are just rotating like normal. But if I zoom in nice and close, you can see that it is much cleaner than it was before because we're not stretching those 256 values of black to white out across the entire height of the comp. If I go back to my time displacement, its time resolution is still set to 1080, which is way higher than it needs to be. Really, I could set this to 256 and it looks almost identical. This is basically the max amount of time resolution that I can have within an eight bits per channel comp. Now, if I jump back to my project panel and change this by Alt or Option clicking on it, it'll jump up to 16 bits per channel and I'll have many, many more shades of gray between black and white. So if I reset my gradient, so it goes back to the top and bottom of the comp, takes a little bit longer to render and process the time displacement, but it does give us more of that time resolution. It's a much smoother transition. Let me take a snapshot and then jump back and switch this to eight bits per channel once more. And you can see just how dramatic of a difference that is. It's still clearly visible that these are aliased pixels, but it looks much better than it did before. So switching to 16 bits per channel is one way to increase the quality of the time displacement. However, that really only applies to graphics you're making inside of After Effects because After Effects can interpolate any extra in-between frames that it needs to in order to make that as smooth as possible. Let me show you what happens if you apply it to an actual video clip. So right here, I have a video of me spinning around in a chair. I recorded this at 4K resolution and 30 frames per second. So if I do this exact same setup, I'll add a solid, we'll call this displacement, add the ramp effect to it, then make an adjustment layer, name this time displacement, drop it down and add the time displacement effect, choose that displacement map as the source with effects and masks and turn off that layer. It does take a bit of time to render, but there we go. I have this very funny looking video of me twisting around in my chair. Since all that was changing in the image was me rotating, the background appears to stay the same, but I could turn this max displacement time down to say 0.25, so a quarter of a second instead of a full second. But you'll notice that really makes this time resolution a lot more blocky. And there's really nothing I can do about this. Even if I increase it up again to 1080, it takes a longer to render, but the image quality itself doesn't really change at all. In fact, if I drop this down to 30, I'm really not getting any more resolution. And this is because my source footage is 30 frames per second. You can't have a time resolution higher than the footage than you're applying it to, or at least it's not going to do anything for you. Even though I'm working in 16 bits per channel, it isn't going to produce anything better than 8 bits per channel since the time resolution of the source footage isn't very high. 30 frames per second is not that much. But I did take a second video, again, just me spinning in my chair. This time it's 1080p, but it's shot at 240 frames per second. So the footage itself is 240 frames per second. And again, it's just me spinning around in the chair. Now, because I dragged this to a new comp, the comp itself is 240 frames per second. I wanna change that by going to my composition settings and I'll just drop this down to 24 frames to just round it off at 10 times slower. If I play this back, now it's playing in real time even though it has 10 times the amount of frames within what we're displaying. So if I again grab these two layers, copy them, paste them over here, go into my adjustment layer and make sure to choose the right source with effects and masks, and then back it up to where I'm mid spin, I can increase this time resolution from 30 all the way up to 240, since that's what my footage was shot at, and look at how much cleaner that is. Yes, it does take longer to render, but it produces much cleaner results 
because it has so much more time resolution to work with. It's still blocky, but it's much, much cleaner than that 30 frames per second clip. Now, obviously it's not getting twisted that much because my displacement time is just a quarter of a second. If I turn that back up to one second, we're gonna get something much sillier. There we go. Now it is getting trimmed off at the ends and that's just because that's where the clip ends. But I could fix that by going up to layer, time, enable time remapping, and then just extend my clip out and move these keyframes forward a little bit. And then I just need to extend my layer out beyond the comp. And now it's not going to be black on the front or tail ends of this clip. And I've successfully created this very trippy slit scan effect. Now let's say you're in a bind. You don't have the option of shooting at a high frame rate. You only have this 30 frames per second footage. Well, what you could do is when recording, make the motion happen very slowly and then interpret the footage at a much higher frame rate. So if I go to this 30 frames per second footage, right click, go down to interpret footage and say main, then I could say conform to frame rate and type in 240 frames per second. I'll click okay and my clip got a whole lot shorter. So again, I'm gonna turn off that time displacement and go up to layer, time, enable time remapping, move these keyframes forward so that it's frozen at the start, rotates around and then frozen at the end. So this is going to play back much quicker as you can see, that's very fast, but if I turn my time displacement back on and then go into the effects controls and turn the time resolution up to 240, which remember is what we interpreted this footage as, it'll take a bit to process, but once it's finished, we get a much cleaner distortion. The only issue is that it goes by much more quickly. So that's why I would suggest if you're going to try to do something and you have to work at 30 frames per second, do the motion very slowly, so that when you speed it up or reinterpret it at a higher frame rate, it won't be going as fast as this is. But that's about the best you can do with standard frame rate footage. Now this slit scan effect is only one use of the time displacement effect. There are many more possibilities of how this can be implemented, and I'm gonna add links to some tutorials by Motion by Nick and Ben Marriott in the description that are excellent examples of using time displacement to drive motion graphics. It's easy to get caught up in this silly looking slit scan effect and not think about how you might be able to use it in different ways. And let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna take this example of my logo and actually just get rid of it and just make a rectangle. And I'll double tap U to bring up all the properties and size it down so that it's just this nice, skinny, long rectangle. And I wanna round off the ends and give it a fill and turn off that stroke. So now I just have this white rectangle and make it a little bit skinnier and I wanna add some position keyframes just on the Y position. So I'll separate those dimensions and on the Y position set a keyframe, put that at the beginning of the comp. And in fact, I'm gonna back this up to the top and then go forward a second, move it to the bottom of the comp and then just loop that. So at two seconds, we'll have it loop and I'll easy ease those keyframes. So nothing fancy, just this rectangle bar moving up and down the comp at 24 frames per second. Next, I'm going to add a repeater into this so that I can have a bunch of copies of it. So I'll just make, let's say 50 copies, go into the transform for that repeater and bring the position down so it's closer together and then offset it so it fills the entire comp. Now I have all of these bars moving up and down the comp at the exact same time. Now I'm gonna move that below my time displacement adjustment layer and turn on my displacement map and I'll just solo it so it takes less time to render. And what I wanna do is make this a linear gradient from left to right. So I'm gonna set the start of the ramp to zero, zero, and the end of the ramp to 19, 20, and zero. So it's going from the top left to the top right. And I'm also going to posterize this. I'll also solo this shape layer and turn the opacity down a little bit. And what I wanna try and do is increase the posterization until there's a bar for every one of these copies. And in fact, to make sure that that is exactly the right number, I'm gonna go back into my shape layer, into the contents, the repeater, and I'm actually gonna forget about that offset. I want it to start on the left edge, and that way I can bring up the position of the layer and scoot it all the way over to the left, and then adjust my repeater to fit all of these copies in the comp exactly the way that I need them to. So I'll just dial this back a little bit until they're all visible in the comp, and now that should line up pretty closely. So there's a division of this posterization on top of the gradient, dividing each one of these copies of my rectangle. It's slightly off, but this should work just fine. Now that that's done, I'll unsolo these layers, turn the opacity back up on the displacement map and turn off the visibility. And immediately you can see what's happening. All these bars that were just moving up and down the comp with easy ease 
are now being oscillated in this sine wave because of the time displacement. And in fact, I'm gonna press U to bring up the keyframes and just add a quick expression, which is loop in plus loop out minus value. And what this is going to do is allow me to move my keyframes around any point in the comp and it will loop in either direction. But now this will continuously move down the line as my comp plays through. So I'll go forward to about here and play it back. And now I have this oscillation happening where without the time displacement, these lines are moving in unison, but with the time displacement aligned to the width of each one of these bars, it is now moving in this wave pattern. And there's a lot I can do to change the shape of this. If I just ease those keyframes a bit more strongly, just like this, that's going to change the shape of the sine wave because they're now moving at different rates. Or I could go into my displacement map, which remember is this gradient, and I could add some contrast to it with the curves effect. Maybe just raise up the brights, darken the darks a little bit, and now it's not just a perfectly linear gradient, and that's going to change the shape of the displacement. If I turn the curves off and back on, you can see exactly what's happening. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of the easing on those keyframes, turn that curves off so we can see that it's just linear, and turn it back on to show you that you can literally shape the way that this time displacement is happening just by adjusting the contrast of these grayscale values. And again, that's just one of many examples. You could do anything you want with your displacement map. It doesn't have to be a linear gradient. I could take off that posterization and change this to a radial ramp move this one to the center and see how that affects everything, you can get something very unique with a nonlinear gradient. So this is definitely an effect that you should get your hands dirty, play around with it to see what you can push it to create and think of it in terms beyond that silly slit scan effect. It is fun, but there's so much more that you can do. But that's everything you need to know about time displacement. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.